Hey, what's going on, guys? Kalamazi here. I've got a pretty interesting video for you all today. Now, over the last week and a half or so, Blizzard has posted a few, I, I guess, blue posts about patch 9.1.5 hitting PTR. And most of the changes have indeed been, at least what they talked about initially, cosmetic. However, with 0.5 patches, there's typically a bit of class tuning that's done. If you remember back, the actual, the initial first affliction nerf to Rapture Malignancy tried to come in, or they tried to push them, I guess, in 9.0.5 PTR, but they pushed that to 9.1. I don't know if that's because it was just too fast. I don't really know. But either way, unfortunately, those went live. But regardless, we saw some class tuning in 9.0.5. Coming 9.1.5, I'm, I'm expecting PTR. I, I, this is a rough guess here. I have no ideas. Uh, I, I have no inside information, but I'm expecting PTR probably within a month, give or take. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I'm not really sure. But either way, with that being said, I think there are a handful of demonology issues, a couple bugs, and a couple, I guess, oversights or just quality of life improvements that I really would like to point out in hopes that maybe they're corrected for patch 9.1.5. Now, in addition to this video, I'm going to be making a, I guess, series of videos on affliction, demonology, and destruction, and some changes class-wise I'd like to see coming in patch 9.1.5. Now, once again, to reiterate, there really aren't any like major changes made typically in 0.5 patches, like adding new talents, taking talents away. We did see some in Legion with Death's Embrace, I believe, for affliction, but for the most part, there are some tuning, some abilities that could be tuned, some buffs and nerfs, I think the specs could use, and just overall tuning as a whole. So if you're interested in that, be looking for that series to start coming out probably later on this weekend into early next week. Now, that being said, if you guys would like any week or us profiles or add-ons you see in this video, you can get them all for free at my Twitch. If you want to swing by, hang out, ask any questions anytime, feel free to do so. Now, I'm also really interested to get you all's thoughts, you all, y'all's thoughts on this video, the topics discussed, the bugs, I guess the oversights and the quality of life improvements that could, I guess, be brought for demonology. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, concerns, feel free to drop them in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you guys want to see more WoW content and help support the channel, be sure to smash the subscribe, the subscribe button below, and while you're down there, hit the like button as well with that being said let's get into the video starting off with a brief overview of why demonology is i guess has been better this tier and how it could be even better heading into 9.1.5 so heading into sanctum domination demonology warlocks were expected to be good a solid high-end single target powerhouses with power infusion with stamina scaling effects we saw complexity limit actually gear up a blood decay tank and plan the rallies and pis and things around demonology warlock cds and we saw both guilds i guess most guilds in the race of the world first having a mix of warlocks which presumably having demonology warlocks at the ready if need be now seeing as how some fights like guardian the first ones were incredibly undertuned and honestly half the fights just here were undertuned and then some nerfs came in a few weeks ago Demonology really didn't see, I guess, as much play as initially thought we thought it would in the early few weeks of the tier, but it's picked up a lot over the last few weeks, like I said, due to some boss nerfs. So very briefly, I have the top 10 parses as far as Warcraft logs go here. Number one, okay, the Terror Guru, it, it is what it is. So it's, it's gonna be whoever gets the good traits, whoever gets PIs, whoever can pad. Terror Guru is a meme boss, albeit a good first boss, but a meme boss. I of the Jailer has a mix of actual AF and uh, Destro here. A bit of Demo, give or take, depending on your guild strat. It can be played, it's fine. The Nine actually has a lot of Demonology in here. Now, there's going to be some Destro parses, I would assume, popping up later on, depending on kill times, certain builds, power infusions, and things like that. A couple AF parses, but the Nine overall was a Demonology boss on progression. So it's the Terror Guru. Then you end up getting to Remnant, which was actually a big Destro boss in Prague but they nerfed the boss, they nerfed, they nerfed the orb health technically, I believe by 60% about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you ever take, the mythic orbs have less health than the heroic orbs now. So Destro for the most part has sort of fallen by the wayside there and you've just seen demonology warlocks rise to the top because you can't barely hit the orbs without them dying and the whole raid's cleaving on them. So you just sort of play demonology and kill the boss faster. Now there are AF parses here, lo and behold, playing decaying a soul satchel, getting five PIs and six PIs, hey, uh, wanted to buy. But regardless, these aren't meme parses or gimmicky parses in a sense. They're just getting a lot of DSS value on orb spawns and probably getting power infusions during that going to 200% plus haste. So like AF can be good here, but demonology has, you know, been most of the play ever since Destro or Renna got nerfed and Destro sort of fell by the wayside. Similar, similarly, Soul Render. Big to the seed spam here. We do see one parse here playing DSS in a single target build, which is interesting. But besides this, Soul Render was a mix of Destro and Demo, a bit more Demo on Prog too, because you couldn't really get a whole lot of value on the large Ag Cleave, barring the Overseer playing Destro. I think most locks often play Demo on this boss. Painsmith was a very large Destro boss as well because of the spiked orbs needing Destro Cleave with Havoc and things. But they nerfed the spike balls and they nerfed the boss and they nerfed the ads coming out of phase two back in the phase one which we've seen due to that a spike in demonology warlock play hey once again 
this what this is the sixth boss of the tier it's another patchwork boss in disguise just get in there prank some big tyrants off and kill the boss guardian obviously big demo fight fate scribe has become mostly a demo fight here too i don't know what dss cleave are getting here maybe on ads it seems degenerate i like it but either way this has become a big demonology fight too because you sort of just rush past the third or fourth set of runes and kill the boss and while destro can get good tank cleave on the ads and some of the smaller ads when the tank ad dies demo just brings more to the fight with that single target profile KT is a meme. We don't even talk about this boss anymore. And Sylvanas has been basically a demonology fight. We have seen Destro played on it a bit. I think it's the worst spec in the fight. We have seen Aft played on it as well, which is a niche build or a niche spec in the fight, but can fill certain roles very well. So what I'm getting at here is this has been the first tier demonology has really been in like the, the limelight, the light, as far as like play has been for a long time. We've seen it played on certain bosses like Zakul, maybe a few bosses here and there, but we really haven't seen demonology be this good probably the most high, like the highest played spec of all warlock specs in a raid uh probably since since what uh not eternal palace what was it uh bod when e, when ep was buffed to an insane amount and pets were double, double dipping with haste so with that being said some of these bugs and i guess quality of life issues have been around for a while they just haven't really been i guess shown or seen as much so with that being said let's get into the video starting off with the biggest bug the Wilfred's bug. Alrighty, so some of these clips are going to be taken from stream and some are actually going to be recorded in game. This is thankfully the one of the clips that I do indeed have footage of from stream. This is the Wilfred's bug. So important things to look at here. The very top left of my action bars is my timer. You can see it counting down about 14, 13 here. Second thing, look at my target frames where Guardian's at. My, to the right of my player frame, you'll see my pet timers, my Vrimwar, my Vilefiend, my dogs at about eight seconds here, give or take. So we'll see the Wilfred's bug in about, about a minute here on my next tyrant. Basically, what the Wilfred's bug is, is for those who don't know what Wilfred's is, whenever you cast a spell that consumes a shard of demonology, it reduces the cooldown of your tyrant by, I think, 0.6 seconds, give or take. I should know this. I used to. I'm just getting old. Forgive me. Regardless, the issue here is that when you're using a CDR effect, like which we are, Wilfred's on our tyrant, at times when your tyrant reaches the point where it comes off cooldown and you try to hit it, it'll actually incur like a hidden gcd you'll see it happen in about 40 seconds here give or take looking at my tyrant where you'll hit summon demonic tyrant you'll see all your spells rotate like a gcd but you don't get the tyrant cast now i'm going to have a baby tyrant here no grimoire coming up in a second or so i'm building my shards here probably gonna cast another hand i get a mechanic on me i have to go dr drop it on the pylon here but watch for my soul rock cast my general setup right here we go build the five we're casting the soul rot we get a mechanic coming in a second here there's the vile fiend here comes the actual hand there go the dogs we get the actual mechanic we have to shift out so we're gonna dump this these two imps here watch my pet timers here we go hand hand or back out watch tyrant cast tyrant now no tyrant there's your gcd though and there goes my dogs i caught the vile fiend but you can see me reacting to it in game you can see the gcd actually like going off but there's no tyrant cast so when you're playing demonology and you're trying to play everything super close to the chest and extend your pets because you want more out or more stamina being or more health being siphoned into a bigger demonic tyrant that's an issue that really needs to be looked at because well i mean that's just a core mechanic of the spec wilfred's is your best single target legendary it's not very close it's overall your best legendary for demonology as a whole and albeit this doesn't happen very often but when it does it's not like oh i lost a shard or oh i i had two conflagrates instead of three this is oh quite literally my big damage every minute or minute and a half is not not that it's it, it's just not big anymore now i was lucky enough to catch the vile fiend there and we killed this boss regardless but i lost a couple of imps i lost a set of dogs and if that's a larger tyrant you're probably going to end up losing your grim war too it'll be very close with it depending on what's going on so that's the biggest issue for demonology that i hope is addressed in patch 9.1.5 the Wilfred's bug. It's been I know it's been talked about for a while now. It's hard to catch footage of. Thankfully, we did here. My final tyrant worked out okay. We killed the boss in four pulls. But regardless, it was a bit disheartening killing the boss with a bug legendary. 
So the second bug for demonology actually is it revolves around our called dreadstalkers, dreadlash and from the shadows. Now, dreadlash causes your dread bite to AoE and from the shadows, it basically whenever your dog's dread bite, they apply a debuff that takes your, it makes your target take 20% increased shadow flame damage, which is the overall that's what the big dog build does. You play dreadlash, you play FTS, you play carnivore stalkers, the conduit, and it gives you a very large damage profile and the plus on trash packs because implosion is shadow flame damage. Demon Bolt is too, and in 9.1, your Tyrant's Demon Fire damage is also Shadow Flame damage and gets an increase from the actual effect. But interestingly enough here, if when you watch me cast my called Dreadstalkers, you'll notice looking at the top left here, my talents, I have Dreadlash, I have FTS. I'll go to cast my Dreadstalkers. I'm trying to time this here properly too in the actual clip from stream, but I go to cast my dogs and you'll see, you'll notice there's there's no from the shadows effect applied on these dummies. Now, I don't have the effect blacklisted and like that. There's a soul right here on the dogs. No FTS. The tracker above the target name, name plate is not FTS. That's my actual dog duration. You'll see it expire here in four seconds. You notice I'm playing Carnivore Stalkers. I'm playing Dreadlash. I'm playing FTS. The actual build is here. Now I Tyrant here, but I notice on the second dog cast that, oh, my dogs aren't giving FTS. The way we can cast them here, once again, no FTS. Now I'll actually skip ahead a bit here, edit the clip. I log back in 10 seconds later. And it's working. So I found that swapping specs, logging in and out, and even changing talents can fix this. The issue, number one, is if you get into a dungeon and this is happening because you're going to have to re-log in the middle of a Mythic Plus dungeon or on a boss fight in a raid if you're playing this build for whatever reason. It, it, it can be an issue if whatever this bug is, is present in that current setting. Now, I don't really know. I can't really place what the issue is here. I don't know if it's a certain talent combination. I typically just play the same one every time. It varies a bit between Soul Conduit and Grimoire Felguard. That's the only variation I've noticed, but I can't really tell if it makes a difference. And that's the reason that it doesn't proc or not. Either way, this is also an issue regardless of the of it, of it working or not in Sanguine Depths on the third boss due to her little great she's standing on there too. So, I mean, hopefully that's addressed. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video, but I don't really know how to pinpoint this bug. It's hard to replicate. It seems to happen when I log in playing Demonology for the day. If I swap to Demonology, it never seems to happen. But if I log in as Demonology, the bug seems to be there. So hopefully this is looked at and potentially addressed in 9.1.5. So this bug, I guess it probably is a bug. It's one that I actually cannot find footage of. And I thought I had logs of it actually from raiding as well, but I cannot seem to locate them. However, I know what's happened on stream a couple of times over the past month or so similar to the Dreadstalker clip we saw a little bit ago. And this is that demonic consumption at times, similar to, you know, your dog's AOEing FTS with Dreadlash just doesn't work. It, it, it will it will not work. So typically in your opener with Demonology, we'll do a, we'll do a basic opener here. We'll precast things. It might not be the optimal opener, but it'll drive home the point I'm trying to show you. So we'll go Grimoire, Vile Fiend, we'll build the five here. We'll cast our dogs, hope for a calling proc, which we never get. Calling proc, nope, never get that. Ruby, I'll just do a few imps going to my tyrant here. Now, when I pop my tyrant, you'll notice in my damage breakdown here, my tyrant will pretty much overtake other abilities. He'll climb, demon fire is a pretty large contributor to our damage. And this is typically how a normal demonology profile looks playing demonic consumption with Grimoire, with Vile Fiend, with the build that everybody plays. Let's be real here, decon is the strongest ability. In that final row, hands down, it has been for a long time, even though my love for another portal is uh, there. We can't really play it in a relevant progression setting. But with this bug, which I've seen on stream a few times, and I believe Shelly or THG, when I talked about this video, had it happen in the past as well, is that instead of your demon fire being here, it's just like down here. Like your demonic consumption just, just does not work. The pets do seem to get their health siphoned, because but you don't seem to get the actual you don't get the bonus from decon it's basically like you're just playing sack souls or portal and just not using them i guess sack souls will be a relevant source of damage anyways with shadow bolts and demon bolts it just just doesn't work now a simple relog will fix this as well as just swapping specs changing talents i believe fixes it as well so it's not wow look at that seven percent oh baby now it's not Typically, it's, it's pretty easy to fix, but the problem is that whenever you get into a raid and pull a boss or get into a dungeon like Mythic Plus and start pulling trash packs and realize, oh, my tyrant is hitting for less than my actual dread bite on my dogs. Now, that might be a bit excessive, but that is an issue. And typically, whenever I play Demonology, I'll log out, swap specs a few times, make sure my tyrant's working, and then go into the raid, go into the dungeon. 
Now, I haven't really been able to pinpoint what the issue is here. It happens with both the Dreadlash FTS build and the Decon build. I'm not really sure what the issue is. I thought it might have initially, initially lied something around like with having Soul Conduit as a talent in this row, but I, I can't seem to replicate it in any kind of, uh, I, I guess, real time. It just happens randomly. Now, typically from what I can remember and tell, it seems to happen whenever I log in as Demonology initially and don't change to it. But that could just be me remembering one or two times, you know, specifically and not just every single time it's happened. So this is another issue that needs to be looked into. And unfortunately, I really don't have any idea as to what's causing it, but hopefully, you know, hopefully our main ability in the final row here uh, will be working all the time heading into 9.1.5. Alrighty, so this is the section of the video where they're not really bugs. These are like the two quality of life changes that I hope to see for Demonology in patch 9.1.5. The number one thing here being imps and portals. Theater of Pain, Spires of Ascension, there's also the weird issue with Sanguine Depths and the third boss in there, like the dogs. Your dogs won't cast FTS on the grate because they can't dread bite, apparently. I think it's like a weird, like, just, uh, I don't know what you call it. There's the weird, like, the floor is different. I don't know what you want to call it. Maybe it's the design of the room overall, but you'll see me casting a couple of imps here, give or take. And you'll notice, like, this happens in TOP, happens in Spires of Ascension as well. Whenever you take the angels around, your imps will not follow you around. See, I have some imps up here. I'll take the portal. We'll actually zoom across. Now, imps live a much longer time outside of combat now than they did in the early stages of beta. I think it was a beta change in BFA regardless. They live like 40-ish seconds. But you'll see when I land here, well, I have no imps. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but number one, if you're tyranting a certain platform and you want to implode the next one, whether you're playing the dog build or not, which I am here, albeit maybe not the best, regardless, you want to carry, there's a there, there's a chance you might want to carry over a big pack of imps into a huge implosion, Dreadstalkers into a big implosion, or you're carrying imps so you can just go dogs into your tyrant on the next platform. So this is actually a bigger issue than it seems for demonology. Now, I don't know if any other classes suffer from this, certain other pets or things despawning in Mythic Plus, and I also don't know of other examples outside of TOP and Spires, but I'm sure they are there. So if I, if I missed any here, please let me know in the comment section below if any dungeons or things of relevancy that I missed. But TOP and Spires being the two big ones are, are the ones that stick out mostly to me because I, I've got all these cool imps laying around. I even implode them there because there's no point. Am I going to implode in single target? Normally no, but they're just going to be wasted. So this would be a really cool quality of life change to see in 0.5, having your imps follow you through portals, whether it be TOP, Spires, or other places in general. Just have, just have your pets work, I guess. Demonology always has this stigma of, okay, your pets are are, are, are dumb, that the pet AI is terrible. And I don't really think it is that way, but then you get into certain spots like this and like, yeah, okay, your imps should follow you and they just don't. And then you go into Sanguine Depths on the third boss and your dogs just don't dread bite. And when that's the main focal point of the build you're playing, even all the way down to your conduits and things it does make things a little awkward so the dogs build the dogs build is fun to play in mythic plus the third boss in sanguine depths yeah that affects the dog build more than the actual goodness it almost got knocked off there more than the actual just straight up single target build but regardless not dread biting is an issue not following through portals is an issue so hopefully this is addressed in 9.1.5 it'll add a bit more relevancy to, to demonology and theater inspires and probably just in general there's probably a handful of places that i missed too whether it be in the plus dungeons or rating regardless it should it feels like something that should just be there in the first place so hopefully we can draw attention to it and have it addressed in 0.5 and last but not least, another issue that's not really a bug, more just like a quality of life fix, but also also something that could be a little more relevant. Actually, it okay, this actually is relevant when it comes to demonology and progression in Mythic Plus and rating, basically anywhere you're dealing with DPS. But the problem is that from what I understand, after talking like THC and Shelly, is that we assume the issue sort of rooted in some kind of like backend uh pet updating system a pet stat updating system every x amount of time in game what i'm getting at is is that your pets so the more health you have as a player the more health your pets have the more health your pets have the more health your tyrant siphons when playing decon as long as the ability is working now the issue is for example i'm playing nia who has who has an ability called grove invigoration that gives you more stamina so here is my felgar i'm gonna focus him i'm actually gonna focus it up i'm gonna actually cast grove invigoration here i will get watch my help i will get the stamina increase instantly but my pet will take at times anywhere from a second to two seconds to three to four it's not consistent as far as it updates there's my health increase bang my pet now, 
that's like three and a half seconds later now while that might not seem like a huge difference a huge deal to somebody who hasn't played demonology a whole lot or is learning the spec initially it actually is because demonic assumption demonology scales with stamina your pets have more health you have more health your pets have more health your your tyrant siphons more health and deals more damage through decon the thing is nia for example her final ability which we can't see behind my camera here but it's fine it's actually called bonded hearts bonded hearts essentially lets you have a 50 percent stamina increase from grove invigoration for five seconds so this was initially speculated on when it came to 9.1 ptr when, when it was data mined that we typically cast our soul rot after our precast demon bolt right now on retail because you want to go bolt into soul rot because when you cast your soul rot the pets you summon after you have a stamina increase on you like grove invigoration from soul rot like a stamina potion or a rallying cry for example those pets will come out with the increased health based off your health but the pets you have out beforehand those pets take a while to update sometimes one two three four five seconds so the issue is is that during ptr testing we thought okay we can take good use of this actual trait here and move our soul rot somewhere in our tyrant cast probably like after our dogs or maybe probably after dogs maybe before our tyrant depending on how long imps have on their remaining duration but unfortunately you can't do that because the actual stamina update on your pets and just secondary sets in general is not consistent as far as okay you know it's going to update instantly or within one second every single time now i i've heard it from you know shelly and thc and people that it's a similar issue for hunters and i believe other pet classes as well they just don't update instantly but from what i can take away from it it's a lot more relevant for demonology warlocks because of this weird stamina scaling effect and things that we have now if you're playing dreamweaver you simply pop your soul right afterwards because we don't have grove immigration to worry about we have field of blossom which is just a haste increase you stand in it you have more haste you crank but once again this ability was you know intended or i guess assumed to be pretty strong for that 50 percent stamina increase but unfortunately we just can't make good use of it so we still just do the same opener of a precast bolt into your soul rot and basically just waste spawn the hearts for the most part if it procs at a random point in time great awesome you get the proc but you can't really plan on it lining up anywhere consistently and this is not just for bonded hearts and grove immigration this is for actual stamina pots stamina flask rallying cries whatever what have you now albeit stamina pots and stamina flask are more sort of thing in the past from what we understand and stuff but regardless it would be nice to have those as an option if certain points in fights arose where hey i want this increase for whatever reason and i want this to translate over for whatever reason now i don't think this is an incredibly likely thing to be fixed probably because it's some like probably a pretty technical back-end kind of issue that's like just been a thing with pets for a long time hunter pets warlock pets uh, i mean, probably even dk pets at this point but regardless as far as like putting aside the top spires of ascension every kind of portal issue where imps are expiring this is in my opinion like like not like the biggest non-bug issue i would i would like to see fixed because honestly it would probably open a lot of doors for demonology as far as stamina scaling goes but with this with this tracker not being like consistent or able to be like i guess unable to count on it being updated every one second or so in game it really leaves you in an awkward spot when you're trying to plan out cds to a min max like to an extreme min max percentage as far as demonology is concerned thanks for watching guys now i don't want this video to be interpreted as me bashing blizz or anything along those lines i am incredibly excited that demonology is a playable spec this tier albeit i've been screwed over on so many fights and tyrant setups with mechanics coming on me it's sort of frustrating but i don't want it to be perceived or taken in that light at all all i'm trying to do is shed light on certain things and abilities that probably could be improved a couple bugs here and there but bugs are a part of the game it is what it is hopefully they're addressed and a couple of quality of life it like changes that if possible would mean a lot for demonology warlocks as a whole now once again i want to know what you guys think about this video and if i missed any bugs or relevant issues please feel free to drop them in the comment section below as well as any questions you might have and i will be sure to get back to you once again i want to thank you guys all so much for the support as well as my patrons thank you guys so much for all the support over the past few months years i think i really truly do appreciate it guys if you're interested in supporting on patreon there should be a link somewhere up here or up here maybe uh, i really truly do appreciate it guys now if you guys want to see more wow content and helps for the channel be sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons below it helps out a ton once again any weak wars profiles or add-ons you've seen you can go up all for free off my twitch if you want to swing by ask any questions feel free to do so with that being said i'll catch you all again soon on stream peace